Charles, this is Stephanie. This is Bart. This is Brad. And today, we're doing our first mur- movie review. Murder review. <laughs> Murder review. Murder review. Sorry. Movie, movie review. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You guys, you guys are killing me. All right, we're reviewing Gremlins. Or Gremlins. Dum, dum, dum. Since you can't find sound effects, so. I can put in sound effects anywhere and anytime I want. Maybe I will now that I have time. She'll just bleep out everything I say. <laughs> Bert's talk. Bleep, bleep. I'm not going to mention. Sometimes I'll be editing and I'll listen back and you'll piss me off. So I'll just fucking take it out. I know. I'll be like, that argument we had wasn't in that last pod. <laughs> that was a very one-sided topic. I believe I commented on that. Not anymore, bitch. It's a great thing of doing editing. I'm going to start doing that with uh, you know who. <laughs> <laughs> B to the M. Yeah, it's <laughs> got this whole shit he says out. Like. <laughs> Beautiful Brad has another podcast he does, and there's a person on there that needs a lot more editing. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, I took Stephanie's advice and let's cut them down quite a bit. <laughs> yes, I mean, if you are drunk and you don't get what somebody's saying, it's kind of understandable. You know, maybe it's you. But then when every other person that's sober listens to it and they're like, what the fuck was he talking about? time to start editing so the most recent pod of brad's other pod like even the drunkest person which you can tell who it is in the we conversation know what the fuck he said. we knew what he was talking about <laughs> the entire time but this other gentleman it no one knew what he was talking about <laughs> and i'm sorry but the one the one gentleman we understood he was plastered oh yeah 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 <laughs> so i'm like damn yeah <laughs> bert call me he goes I've never heard him so shit faced. <laughs> I'm like, I language. know, right? <laughs> I mean, and I was, but it with, was English. It was yeah. mostly English. Yeah, it was though. English, and I was with him when he was shit faced enough to light his boxers on fire. <laughs> and he was more shit faced than that. <laughs> so, and I still knew where he was coming from. So. <laughs> it's very bad. Yeah, it's very bad. <laughs> And I am so sorry for all the bleeps you had to do. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> I've never even. They must have been saying some really bad shit. Cause no, it was names. Usually... All he was doing was bleeping oh. names. Like, beep, beep, beep. Like, you have to give half the pod. They're like, bleep. I'm, like, only half shit. I'm, I'm only like 20 minutes into it. Uh, I got to finish it. It's a disaster. Like, I'm just constantly like, oh my God, this is going nowhere. <laughs> it was hysterical. But the ble- it, was, it was hysterical. You went nowhere. You're right. You started on topic. You never even finished the yeah, topic. Yeah. <laughs> and they mentioned that like three times. Are we still on top? What are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> they are breaking the plane. And I'm like, what, what plane is everybody talking about? Yeah. <laughs> it's a disaster. I thought somebody did some fucked up shit on a plane because the the, the person in question who doesn't speak English <laughs> was supposed to be becoming a flight attendant. <laughs> no, not that plane. We'll go into more detail off the air. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. All right, back to what we actually do. Yeah, because we can kind of, sort of, a little bit stay on topic. Yes, this this pod <laughs> is uh, intelligent people that can complete full sentences. And we're, we're not drunk, but if you'd like us to get drunk and record, <laughs> oh, that's no problem with email that. us. Yeah, let us know. We'll even drink the beer. Your choice. Pottymouths at gmail.com. <laughs> Give us some recipes. We'll get down and do drunken movie reviews. That could be fun. It yeah. could be. <laughs> it could be. DMR, drunken movie reviews. I like That sounds like a whole new podcast right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my sister and I were going to do that just so we'd have an excuse to get wasted. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway, so. Gremlins. Gremlins. Produced. Steven Spielberg, directed by Joe Dante, written by Chris Columbus, not the one that sailed the ocean blue. Mm-hmm. No, that's the, Christopher. Yeah, yeah, this is Chris Columbus. But I didn't hear that joke when he was a kid. So, obviously, Steven Spielberg, Schindler's List, E.T., Indiana Jones, Twister, and the newly announced Gremlins 3. They decided to go in on a movie. Mm-hmm. They're going to do a Gremlins 3, and Steven Spielberg's already in it. Really? Ooh, wow. So, director Joe Dante, Inner Space, The Howling, Small Soldiers, five episodes of Eerie Indiana, uh, Gremlins 2, and The Burbs. 
The Burbs is a classic, in Burbs. my opinion. Yeah. So Chris Columbus also wrote Gremlins 2. The Goonies. Nice. Newly nice. announced Goonies 2. Uh, and he's written newly announced Goonie, or Gremlins 3. So how are they going to do it? If it's the kids of the kids, that's going to be dumb. Yeah. And if it's the adults trying to be kids, sorry, Sean Austin, you've already done that. It was called well, Lord of the Rings. Maybe. Okay? <laughs> so. I mean, if they were supposed to, like... It's just another group of kids getting into weird shenanigans. Then it should just be called Goonies and be a reimagining. No, I mean... I just come up with a new name. Yeah. Yeah. Just... Like the boobies. <laughs> Sandlot! Oh, wait, they already did it! I was, gonna, I was gonna say the Sandlot. I mean, it's just a group of kids getting into some random bullshit. Well, playing baseball. It has been done before. Correct. So, anyway, the but Chris Columbus also wrote that new uh, Scoob. The new Scooby-Doo movie? Yeah, the new Scoob- Scooby-Doo movie. And the That's announced, cool. in production, Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Oh, really? Wow. Which my youngest is fucking stoked for. Yeah. Cool. So, the, it released June 8th, 1984. The budget was $11 million, estimated. Opening weekend in the U.S., it was... I mean, it hit a little over $12.5 million. That was by June 10th, so just that chunk of the weekend. So that weekend, it made all its money back. Yeah, yeah it did. And <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Worldwide gross, accumulative, uh, almost. These don't almost 200 million. Really? Wow, that's a huge profit margin. Well, you got to remember. Yeah, but I so, was expecting it to be. So you guys remember it's 1980s. Mm-hmm. Total gross for Globe is probably including movie ticket sales. As well as VHS when it came out five years later. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. And probably DVD sales since then. It's just that in 1984, I was expecting this to be higher considering opening weekend. But that kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. So, yeah, we'll get to that part. But there's, I was really surprised. There's a part in the store where I saw the prices. Of, they were talking about the prices of the stuff. I'm like, holy crap, I can buy that for half the price now. It's 2019. $1,800 snowblower. It's like, it's on sale for eleven ninety nine. I'm like, I can get one for six fifty. <laughs> Must be a lot more plastic. So the runtime was 106 minutes. It was originally 160 <laughs> minutes. But they actually filmed, well, I think it was... Two hours and 40 minutes of an actual movie, trimmed it to 160, and then trimmed it down to 106. Oh, wow. Holy crap. What kind of deleted scenes are there? Is I don't know, but I'd love to get a hold of them. We got the... Never mind. I mean, we can YouTube it. I was wondering some sex scenes they took out. Maybe. <laughs> no. In the bank, you know, where the dog was hiding. No. Two tellers. I'd like to see an extended Mrs. Deagle death scene. Yeah, really. <laughs> That's what I'd like to see. She sucked. So, Bitch. Zach Galligan played Billy Peltzer. Phoebe Cates played Kate Beringer. Billy and Kate porno. But, <laughs> I mean, they're the there's a ton of people in this movie. Hoyt Axton huh, played Randall Rand Peltzer, the dad. Yeah, he's a country folk singer or some stuff. Well, and then apparently Steven Spielberg had it hard for him for this part because I guess he played a really awesome dad in Black Beauty, which I probably saw when I was little, little, and yeah, I haven't it was seen it. Seventy eight or seventy nine that came out. Yeah, it's been since grade school. Polly Holiday as Mrs. Ruby Deagle. By the way, during. When we go through and really get into the nitty gritty with this movie, we're just going to call everybody by their movie names. Because yes. I'm never going to remember all these actor names. No, don't do that. Don't worry about it. Movie names are good. Okay. Dick Miller as Murray Futterman. Who just passed away this past January. Yeah. So That old dude. Yep. Yeah. Just passed away this year. Let's see. Francis Lee McCain <coughs> as Lynn Peltzer. That's the mom. Judge Reinhold as... Gerald Hopkins. Dick. Yeah. At least in this film, so. Oh, what else was he in? It was on... There was a show that he was in. I don't know. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. This film, he did uh, The Santa There's Claus. There's a ton stuff. of Fast Ma- <laughs> Fast Times at Ridgemont High in this. Thank God Sean Penn wasn't. If he was in there, <laughs> I probably wouldn't watch it. Right. <laughs> there was one other part where I'm thinking of where he was a douche, but I'll look that up later. Beverly Hills Cop, he was pretty cool. Yeah, I liked him in Rosewood. Yeah. Yeah, I fucking love Rosewood. Liked him in that. (laughs) 
Oh, my God. All right, that makes up for it now. <laughs> <laughs> Key Luke is Mr. Wing, which, by the way, you don't learn his name until the second one. They just call him Grandfather. Yeah, Grandfather. I was going to say uncle, but no, it's Grandfather. So. Scott Brady is Sheriff Frank Riley. Corey Feldman is Pete Fontaine. A super young Corey super Feldman. Super young Corey Feldman. Jonathan Banks is def- Deputy Brent Fry. Edward Andrews as Mr. Roland Corbin. Jackie Joseph as Sheila Futterman. <laughs> I don't know why I love that last name so much. Futterman. Um, and everybody else is just kind of, eh, whatever. Except for Howie Mandel. Who played the voice of Gizmo, which was actually bright light, bright light, suggested to them by Frank Welker, the guy vo- Scooby Doo's voice. No, really. He voiced Stripes and a bunch of the other Gremlins, and he's like, you know who'd make a great Gizmo? Boom! Howie Mandel. This is when Howie Mandel still had hair. Uh, Don Steele is Rockin' Ricky Rolto. Would you never see? You just hear his no, voice. No, you just on the hear radio. his voice. But I like it. And oh, Michael Winslow, the guy on Police Academy that does all the sound effects. He did the sound effects for all the Gremlins. No, oh, really. All the weird little noises and stuff that they make. That's all. Awesome. That is a national treasure. It'll be yeah, a it sad is. day when he passes. I mean, I just he just randomly pops in there, and you're like, son of a bitch! Like when he just shows up, space balls. Which we had a 15 minute discussion about space balls at work today. <coughs> Super productive food safety meeting, so. <laughs> what did you talk about at work for 15 minutes about space balls? Well, I mean, somebody asked my boss a question. He answered. He goes, That's why I make $5,000 a minute or whatever, just joking around. I'm like, Well, I do this. That's why I make minimum wage and plus air. He goes, Hmm, I think I'll take the air. It was just like in Spaceballs, and that's where the discussion started. Gotcha. <laughs> Fifteen minutes later, we decided to go on with the meeting. <laughs> All right, so the story of Gremlins was conceived by Chris Columbus. Remember, not the ocean blue guy. Uh, he was inspired by it because at night when he would lay down to go to sleep in his loft... All the mice and shit would get super active, and they make the scurrying little pitter patters of feet. Oh, yeah. And he was trying to get recognized for his writing, so he wrote like a short story about the gremlins inspired by that sound that they make. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't never supposed to be a movie. And then Steven Spielberg's like, "That's some good shit," and he bought it. And that's how it got started. You know, it's cooler to that when you come up with a really terrible idea, but somebody buys it just so they don't make a show of it. Yeah. NBC <laughs> and CBS do that all the time. <laughs> Seriously, they will buy people's ideas so they won't make a show about it. I want a movie. So they just sit on this shit, yep. and just save it, or yep. just yep. I can't remember who it was. I heard it on the radio, but they like he had two pilots come out and they became shows. And they released so he came up with another one, and they're like, "We won't buy the rights for the next five years." So he's like, "Great, we're gonna, we're gonna get something." Five years went by, like, hey, we won't, buy, we won't buy the rights for another five years. Are you guys going to do anything with it? Like, no, it's just, we don't want it to ever air. Really? And they're like, we'll pay you more now. And they paid him more. He's like, Is well, it because they're afraid of the competition of the story? or It's so, either so good that they don't think they have the right casting to be able to make it happen, or they're afraid that if it's available out there, like, they're not interested, but they don't want anybody else to jump on it. Like, How I Met Your Mother, supposedly, is one of those ones they got sat on for a really long time and then mm-hmm. decided to roll with it. But they pay you not... To, I mean, they pay buy the rights for a period of time so you can't go anybody else to have your show or film made. And apparently that's a really big thing. And well, if may, I ever write anything, I'm going to put in my contract that within, like, two years of buying my shit, you have to use it. But they're making, like, they're making, like, good money. It's like, here's, here's $300,000. Well, I'll I guess I could just crank it. 300 grand for not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. And, I, I, yeah. and what is it, just, like, a concept or a pilot? Or? Pilot, script, the concept, anything like that. Yeah, okay, give me 300 grand. You 300 grand up to make that? Like, man, I was, like, wasting, wrote in 15 minutes on a shit or pfft. Yeah, Done. Shit, that makes Woo! people start trying to crank shit out. Like, yo, buy this. <laughs> yeah, apparently that's a really big thing with the networks, though. That's why they hate some of these cable networks that came up. Because a lot of stuff that got set on, like, went to FX and yeah. everything. Because mm-hmm. a lot of it's, like, really racy. And they're like, we can't do this. So HBO jumped on yeah. and stuff like that. FX jumps on stuff like that. It's definitely the golden age of television, man. There is a lot of good There television. is. And it's funny because most of it's not network TV. Yeah. It's the streaming channels, which mm-hmm. I appreciate so much. Netflix and Prime and Hulu, they're really doing some good work. Yeah. I'll move on. 
So this movie is actually rated PG-13, really? which is an interesting concept considering the fact that before this and Indiana Jones Temple of Doom, there was no PG-13. There was only PG and R. And those two movies, Indiana Jones and Gremlins, helped there to be something in the middle. And that was the birth of PG-13. I, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun here, but is this like the first Christmas horror crossover movie done? or No, because Black Christmas was done like back in the 70s. 70s, okay. Yeah. The original Black Christmas was done way back. Gotcha. And I'm pretty sure there's an old Krampus. Is there? Probably. Yeah, I want to say there's an old Krampus. Plus, technically, if you look at, like, Scrooge and shit, which it's is good. Yeah. 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 It's... Good old I mean, Ebenezer. Yeah. Who, actually, Ebenezer Scrooge inspired the character Miss Deagle. Which it fucking shows. But at least Scrooge, you know... He used to be a nice guy, and then he got brokenhearted, and then he was a dick, and then he became a nice guy again. Mrs. Deagle's just straight up fucking evil bitch. Oh, yeah. It was originally planned to release the week of Christmas, but they were actually going to be in the runnings. Like, they were going to release the same day as Indiana Jones. Oh, really? And Steven Spielberg's like, no, we got to get this shit out by summer. And they rushed, and it ended up coming out the same day as Ghostbusters. Oh, wow. Look, listen to all these hits coming yeah, out, Yeah, well, man. here's the thing, though. 84 was a good year for Yes, film. it was. It's also real. a prime year for Gentlemen to be Born, such as Bert himself. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, good year. It's like fine wine. So, <laughs> the funny thing is, the top four grossing films in 1984, Gremlins and Ghostbusters, are in it. So, I mean, they came out the same day, and they're both. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Most you don't time, see that now. You hear people yeah. saying it was a really good movie. It was just released on a shitty day. It came out the same time as Blah. Well, they both did fucking great and they came out the same day. The new Charlie's Angels released the same day as Blah Blah Blah. That's oh, why it did even. so terrible. Like, shut up, uh, Charlie Stern, you stupid bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Movies ran a lot longer back then, too, though. Like, now, within, what, like, three months of release, you got, like, the Blu-rays yeah, coming out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember when Jurassic Park came out. It was, like, over a year yeah. before it came out on VHS. Yeah, like, Titanic. I mean, shit, I think it was in the theaters for well over a year. Yeah, well, I mean, it did so well. But that's the thing. Nowadays, the shit comes out so quick on Blu-ray, you don't need to go to the theater and see it multiple times because you can own it three months after it releases. Yeah, and they don't need you to because they're charging you like five times the price of movie tickets, too. Yeah, that too. is true. They get you. Every time we leave the house to take the kids out to see a movie. Five dollars these us. days. Good lord, yeah, I wouldn't be going much either. Between f- the tickets, the popcorn, and the drinks, hundred bucks. When I can uh, make it on Tuesdays, it's just five twenty-five. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start being busy on Tuesdays now. Got my Star Wars ticket. I'm ready, man. I saw, <laughs> I saw your I saw Star Wars it. ticket. Oh, Judd Nelson and Emilio Estevez were considered for the role of Billy. Emilio Estevez would have been funny. Oh, God. I don't like either one of them, and I'm glad they made it that... What do you mean you don't like either one of them? For this part... I'm glad they went with the guy they chose because I thought he worked really well. Judge Reinhold? Yeah. I mean, so I here's the him. thing. He wasn't even really in the running, but when he read his lines with Phoebe Cates, the, mm-hmm. the girl that played Kate, uh, they really liked the chemistry between the two of them, which is why he got the part. I don't think. I love Emilia Estevez and Judge Nelson, Judd Nelson. The problem is, I don't think they would have done. Very well. As Billy? As Billy. Yeah, I don't I don't say as Billy. They don't seem nerdy to me at all. And when they casted him, when they originally wrote up his part, he was supposed to be nerdy as fuck. You know? Like D&D nerdy as fuck. They were going to have him running around town carrying a fucking sword. You know who could have yeah. done it and <laughs> been nerdy enough? John Cryer. <laughs> yes. I love John Cryer. I know you do. John Cryer could have done it. And then Judge Radhole's spot could have been played by James Spader. Ah. Uh, Talk about pretty and pink, all that. I mean, yeah. yeah. Thank God that they were more Steven Spielberg, because <laughs> there is they're just like circle jerking all three of each other through this whole fucking film. E. T. references and inner space references and shout outs to the howling and all this stuff. They were just circle jerking each other through this whole fucking movie. They're like, hey, Chris, hey, fucking Dante, hey, Spielberg, just giving each other handies and shit. <laughs> Can I get my E.T. doll in there? Yeah, if we get that sticker on the refrigerator from the Howling. Yeah, yeah, they did. 
You know what? Product placement, you know? It's a lost art. Hey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Man, when they had that shot of that Coca-Cola, did that make you guys want a soda? Yeah. I mean, it fucking had me thirsty. It did. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, it was the only thing that didn't come out of a broken machine, so I was definitely thirsty. That fried chicken. Yeah, yeah, that looked pretty good, too. <laughs> <laughs> fried chicken don't look like that no more in a bucket. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, start breaking down the movie. Okay. Are you ready? All right. Intro. Chinatown. Go, Bert, go. He's committed it all to fucking memory, Brad. I wish because I had that he memory. doesn't need <laughs> fucking notes. Are you ready for me to begin? Oh my god. So the lead character, the father Peltzer, being led by a young Oriental boy down a creepy staircase to a sub level retail store. Okay, you can <laughs> speed it up a little bit more. No, you want a detail. I'm <laughs> giving you detail. As he narrates the story of this Christmas. And finding the perfect gift for his son. Dum dum dum. I fucking hate you. <laughs> See this this pops my first question. Like I I hate being critical over movies because they're you know supposed to be escape from realities. But like it wh- bothers you if the things don't match, right? We have like, consistencies and shit. Yeah, same here. But also like. Why would you just decide to follow a young boy down a fucking creepy ass alleyway in Chinatown? <laughs> yeah. Today, those movies go a totally yeah. different direction. Yeah. <laughs> and if somebody caught that on their phone, you'd probably be going to prison. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Sorry, please get out. <laughs> yeah, I, don't I have know. an answer to that. Let's hear please it. Please tell us. So this is the eighties, where yeah, Big Trouble in Little China. I mean, I'd be like, oh. Uh-uh. There's some spirit stuff now. Exactly. So let's assume he's been out on the road slinging his wares. He hasn't seen Big Trouble in Little China. He is just following a kid to his grandfather to his grandfather's shop to try and give him his shit to sell. Okay, that makes more. He's making a business connection. Gotcha. Same way drug dealers do. (laughs) And he probably thinks that the deep. Dark side of Chinatown hasn't been tapped by other inventors trying to also put their shit out on the streets. I like how you flesh it out for me. I like that explanation. (laughs) Is that suitable? That was suitable. (laughs) I'm glad I could give you something there. Because it was also weird that that kid's like, hey, I'm about to fuck this my grandfather over for $200 for Gizmo knowing he shouldn't have been out the fucking door. $200 went a long way back then. That's true. True, but once again, like I said, when you see some of the prices and stuff back then, you compare it to prices now, you're like, holy crap. How yeah, yeah but look at, these, stuff. look at these designer dogs. Like, Gizmo would have been $15,000 oh, yeah. today. Oh, yeah. Totally. Oh, yeah. He would have been twenty grand. No, he would have been like twenty grand, like totally. <laughs> yeah. For $200, Gizmo was a steal. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so, like, when he told him that he's a Mogwai, Mogwai in Cantonese actually means demon or devil. Really? Mm-hmm. Cute little demon. He's voice. fucking adorable. I know why he wants him. As soon as he started singing, I'm like, I fucking want one. <laughs> and I got one, too. Gizmo was my first toy ever. My mom even wrote it down in my really? baby book. I got a lot of gremlin action figures. I got me the Gizmo. So your mom waited on over a year before she bought you a toy. So she waited over a year before she bought you a stuff. Yeah, honey, babies aren't supposed to sleep with shit in their cribs. It's called SIDS. <clears throat> Back then, you were allowed to drink alcohol while you were pregnant. Yeah, my mom, <laughs> my mom's doctor actually told her that if she was having trouble sleeping in the last trimester with me, to have a beer before bed every night. Hell now we yeah. know <laughs> what's wrong. <laughs> my parents just smoked weed, but your parents but they knew weed. about fucking SIDS. Yeah, so that was good. So at least I didn't die in my grip. Eighties babies. <laughs> so, grandfather says no. Kid says yes for two hundred dollars. Meet me out back, and the exchange is made. And this kid just blurts out, "Look, don't feed him after midnight. Don't get him fucking wet." And what's the other one? Oh, no bright lights. Right. No. By the time he gets home, he's worked out like there was no detail in that. He's worked out that the bright lights will kill him, and he's worked out that. But he has no idea about why not to get him wet. Wouldn't that fucking? I'm sorry. This seems like a high maintenance pet. Yeah. It really does. Like, I want, a, I want a skunk. But then I'm, like, reading up on their diet, and I basically have to make this thing a fruit salad every damn day, and I'm like, mm, I won't even make myself salad every day. 
I'm just saying. Yeah, it's a high maintenance pet. But once again, this is <clears throat> escape from reality. You got to look past <clears throat> some of this stuff. So, but we're back in town, and you know the Christmas music's on. A beautiful we're, town, a yes. beautiful with town. A town square that might look somewhat familiar to everyone. What town, you may ask? Well, what town did <laughs> Marty McFly live? In? Oh, is, is it the same set? It's the same set. No it's shit. the same town that they would film Back to the Future. In. So wow. the film. The theater where they were watching Snow White and the Seven Dwarves is the same theater Marty McFly drove the DeLorean into. No, really? Yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yep. Yep. Hmm, wow. So, you see Billy and Barney, which <laughs> Barney wouldn't follow Billy through the movie, so they had to tie a, a string to him that you can't see, so the dog knew to follow him, because for whatever reason, his... Barney's real name is Mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> Hippie dog. Yeah. He's actually uh, Lance Hendrickson's dog and Pumpkinhead. Nice. Gypsy. So that was like an interesting little tidbit I thought was funny because just fucking put some treats in your pocket, man. And on this cold, snowy day, Billy is attempting to get to work on time and start his Volkswagen Beetle. Which apparently doesn't fucking work. And then Mr. Futterman comes outside and starts ranting and raving about his Kentucky fucking harvester. <laughs> International harvester. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that leads me to my other question. <laughs> Nowadays, there's no way he could get away with talking so much shit about foreign foreign this, foreign that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In the last... 30 plus years, the culture has changed oh, yeah. so much. I love catching that in these older movies. Like, yeah, no, there's no way. Yeah. There's no way. Talk about American brands and all this yeah, other stuff. The, the and, foreigners put the and gremlins. And then bringing back, bringing back the gremlins from the war because they put them in there. Yeah, no, yeah there's yeah. no way that that would. <laughs> Which is funny because the gremlins was a World War II thing. It just happened to be Billy's car was a Volkswagen from Germany, the people's car, you know? Well, in the v- beginning when the dad's walking through Chinatown, there's a broke down fucking gremlin oh is there really yeah in the in the, in the in the alleyway which is i mean just funny but yeah he's ran and raving about these gremlins and <laughs> everybody's like but actually Damn foreigners um there's a bugs bunny cartoon where he's laughing and making jokes about the the rumors that there's gremlins bringing down world war ii planes and then the gremlins start taking down the set behind him they're cute it was supposed to be a spin-off cartoon but it never got made Hmm. But I thought it was pretty cute. So, Billy's like, fuck this. I'm walking. He gets to work. He ties up Barney. Enter the bitch. Oh, yeah. So my question is, this is where I have a question. <laughs> How does she know Barney broke her snowman? Because they're neighbors. She's just a cunt bag bitch. So is that like a deleted scene of like the... It Alan has Plus to be. Where there. she looks Barney out the window and, and he's just running. Up. Look, if I was Barney, I'd have hosed her whole fucking life down with piss. But that was a Bavarian imported snowman. Oh, it fuck looked, your money, bitch. You don't even have the Christmas spirit. You don't deserve a fucking snowman. Have that poor Miss Harris try to get a little bit more time for their rent, too. I and know. Kids Her kids hungry. are out there in the cold coughing and shit. And they're hungry. And they're hungry, and she's like, no, I'm sorry. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm in the business to make money. Well, they set the bar high for us to hate that bitch. Yeah, yeah, they really did. From the beginning. And yeah. then she leans in and starts whispering to Billy about a slow death for fucking Barney. I'm like, this cunt's gotta go. <laughs> so, I was happy to see her go. She got what she dissolved. And then her little panic attack. Barney came out from underneath and jumped. Oh, my heart, bitch, I hope it explodes. Yeah. I don't give two fucks. Don't you fuck with Barney. Yeah, he's a precious <laughs> little animal. Yeah, he is. He's a cute pup. So then Kate comes up to Billy and hands him a petition to sign, too, to get the bar that the, the whole town goes to. Mm-hmm. Probably the one fucking bar. Um, Miss Deagle's trying to buy it up, shut it fucking down, so they're trying to get it listed as a historical landmark to because try to stop it. everybody's the father proposed to their mother in that bar. I mean, if you got to do it somewhere, that's what, they, that's what that's what Kate said to Billy. Because Billy is where my dad proposed to my mom. Everybody's dad proposed their mom there. Can you just I'm, imagine working at the one place every five minutes? You're just like, God damn it, another fucking proposal. <laughs> that would kind of be annoying to me. 
Must be a lot of good vibes in that bar. Cheap beer. They yeah. <laughs> Cheap beer. So the Barney scenes goes down. Mr. Miss Deagle's a fucking bitch. And then fucking Billy's sitting in the bar because he's almost been fired. Enter Gerald the dick. Who he was a dick. Yeah, who tells fucking Billy that it was him that kept him from getting fired mm-hmm. and fuck the dog and fuck everything up. And then he makes a sleazy fucking pass at Kate and shit. And she's like, I ain't buying her bullshit. And I'm like, good girl, because he's a sleazy dick. I fell in love with her there. I'm like, that, that's my girl. <laughs> you want to come see my new apartment? I ain't seen your old apartment. Good job, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you go. You go. He's an asshole. So I appreciated that, too. Wasn't he, like, shitting on Billy for taking care of his parents? Yeah, yeah he fucking was. Like, you, like, take, well, you, like, support your entire family or whatever. Yeah. He was just shitting on everything he did. And then probably knows that Billy's got it in for Kate. And then makes a sleazy-ass pass at her right in front of him. What a double douche. Double douche. D- double douche. Double douche. 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 Alright, that's gonna be an official thing. Rate and douches. <laughs> Give him a double douche. Double douche. <laughs> Is there anything worse than a double douche? Yeah, I mean, there's a triple douche. Oh, so we're is a we're quadruple going, oh, douche. Okay, I didn't know wow. if like double was the top off. Let's go. Let's go. A quintuple douche. We'll Damn. go five douches. I'm so give you would him only give douches. you'd only give him a double douche. I'd only give him yeah, a double because he doesn't have a whole lot more to do in the movie yeah. after that. Yeah. He's, he's and, very okay, and we put assigning douchebaggery. So it's got to be like like more. If, Involved in the movie. Yeah, because if you put his... Because he didn't steal his girl. He okay. didn't steal his money. He didn't fuck him up and put him in jail or anything. He talks shit. Okay. He talks yeah, shit. Yeah, he right. double douches completely her. reasonable. He didn't gotcha. throw anything at her when she rejected him. Yeah. So what's Miss Deagle? He Deagle? laughed it off. Miss... Okay, we're going to... Uh, are we going to douchebaggery her or are we going to cunt baggery? Ooh. Yeah, I like the cunts and the douches. Because I'm giving her a quintuple <laughs> cunt because she threatens Quince people. Tuples. She doesn't give a fuck about people's money problems. She's being a shit bag on fucking We Christmas. weren't ready at all. We are now. <laughs> and, and she fucking threatens animals. Wants animals to have a, a poor little fucking dog to have yeah. a slow death. Quintuple cut or whatever the fuck. Quint, quint, <laughs> quintuple cunt. Yeah. Quintuple we, cunt. So, so yeah. far we got a double douche. And a quintuple cunt. So, <laughs> they're by far the worst people in the entire film. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the gremlins were cooler than these motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even Stripe, you know I mean? Which, he missed the first time he shot. Yeah. When, I was, <laughs> when I was writing down notes for this movie, and I was just pr- trying to put my words on paper, after the Gerald the Sleaze scene, I literally r- wrote, Norman Rockwell Christmas destroyed by double dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's all Christmassy, and it's all Norman Rockwell, and everything. And then the people in this movie are already shitting all over Christmas. And the gremlins ain't even arrived. Yeah, really. And I mean, his his fucking dad's gone, his mom's stressed out, he's got this crush on this babe, he works at this bank. The bank is kind of like just under the thumb of this fucking quintuple cunt Miss Deagle. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. kind of already a shitty Christmas, man. His car wouldn't start. It's a rough day. To yeah. yeah. And is it Christmas Eve or is it's, it? I think it's Christmas Eve. No, 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 no. Because they saw it at school. Uh, did they get out of school? I thought he was like a full-time employee. He was a full-time employee. But I thought she was but decorating. Remember, he oh, went to the, the kid, school. Yeah. The kids were still there. So this is like a couple of days. So you got to at least think it was the Friday before Christmas yeah. or Christmas Eve. So Christmas may have been on a Monday. Sunday could have been Christmas Eve or something. But I've never went to a school where you went to school on Christmas Eve. Yeah. That's true. But so, I mean, it was really close to Christmas. It could be just days before. Maybe Christmas Eve was the final day. You mean the day where they, they were victorious? And yeah, Spoiler the, alert. The spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as the sun came up, that was Christmas morning. No, after Christmas they destroyed Eve. everybody. That would be Christmas Eve. So you think it was Christmas Eve? When the sun comes up and everything's destroyed, that could be Christmas Eve. The day the gremlins happened, they still had school that morning because the teacher died. No, I mean, died. the end ended on Christmas Eve. Yes, but you said Christmas Day. Oh. Well, after everything. Yeah. So let's assume it was on a Friday. Saturday was Christmas Eve. Okay. 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 All right, we can do that. We can do that. Because it never actually no. gives well, you Well, I don't know. 1984, so this would be... Well, it came out in fucking June. 
But I'm just saying, so like, what year was it supposed to be? 84 or 83? We just need to find out what Christmas was. If this whole chronological idea could be completely wrong and Christmas could be on a freaking Wednesday. <laughs> we did not do our due diligence in our research. For this. Yeah, we, we, gonna, we need the Gremlins canon. Yo. Plus, not to mention that, but what if... Where's maybe, the fandom? Where's yeah. the wiki for Gremlins? <laughs> like, what seriously. If, what if it was the day before and then everything went down on Christmas Eve? That morning when the sun came up and Dad came home, it was just in time to see the Gremlins fucking die. That was Christmas Day, and then just for fucking fuck's sake, so they could have a teacher there to run tests, they threw in the scene with everybody but being there in school. But there were students. Right, but what if they didn't give a fuck that they're going to be out for two weeks for Christmas fucking break? Nope, I am right. In 1983, Christmas was on a Sunday. Oh, Christmas yeah. Eve was on a Saturday. <laughs> oh, so all this stuff <laughs> happened on Friday, December 23rd. 1983. We, we have I your answer. I hate when you're right. <laughs> I am awesome. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> you're about to be placed on my douchebaggery list. So, Billy goes home, obviously fucking defeated. Dad comes home. And he's got a present for Billy. And it's little fucking Gizmo. Which, he names him Gizmo, I'm assuming, because he sells... Yeah. Gizmos. That was my guess. I mean, there was some brief talk in the trivia that I was looking up about how his name was, but it it just came down to dude sold Gizmos, so we named him Gizmo, which I liked. Yeah, it's a cool name. It's interesting. I really, really liked that part. So, yeah, I can tell you that. I can see that. Immediately. Bright light in the fucking face from the camera. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right, here are the rules. No bright lights. Definitely don't take him out of the sun. It'll kill him. And the look on Billy's face when he says this, he's just like, what? Don't get him wet. Don't even give him water. And definitely don't give him a bath. What kind of thing doesn't drink? Yeah. <laughs> so and then, But they can run around out in the snow. Well, that goes back to we got to realize it's just the escape reality. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so let's think about this. So... The father, Mr. Feltzer, or Peltzer, or whatever. Peltzer. Peltzer. What if he named... He makes inventions. Well, invention's a terrible name. But what if he named Gizmo Gadget? Would that make Gadget from Rescue Rangers Gizmo? If they switched. <laughs> but I like Gizmo's boy name. Gadget's a girl name. I don't know but what it is. Inspector Gadget yeah. is <laughs> not a girl. <laughs> Penny! That we girl. know of. Don't assume his gender. <laughs> oh... <laughs> <laughs> Mike drop the 2000 teens have hit. Yeah, 2019. So anyway, can't wait till 2020 so we can call it the 20s. We have the roaring 20s. Oh, we should bring it back. Oh hell yeah! It's, oh fuck you. <laughs> so anyway, night one, he gets his picture taken with a flash, gets fucked up. Then Billy, what? How, how does he fall off the desk again? Was it well, when oh, he gets hit with the he's water? He's shining something. And it flashes in his face. I don't know if it was a mirror or something. Gizmo goes fucking flying into the garbage can and now he's got a cut on his head. So he's all bandaged as fuck his first night in that damn house. You just knew shit was going to (laughs) go. Shit was going to be popping off. You just knew. So then the morning. That fucking morning when he comes downstairs to make breakfast and he grabs a cup and you know he wants some orange juice and that ominous look he gives that fucking juicer. (laughs) I was like, that's acting because he just knows it's going to be fucked up. But I love the whole family's denial about the dad's inventions. They just use the shit. (laughs) They don't get upset. They just try and make it work and they just fucking use it. Such a supportive family. I know. He could have just bought orange juice, but he grabbed that cup and he stared down that fucking juicer and he's like, (laughs) And that egg cracker thing, too. Oh, man. And when she's trying to answer the phone when she's baking gingerbread cookies right before shit hits the fan, like everything. He set that whole house up and they know it's shit. Nobody says anything, nobody does anything, and they continue to use his shit because it makes him happy. That's a good support system. (laughs) Yeah, they're definitely trying not to let his dream die. 
I mean, it was a nice house. He must have been paying the bills some. Or I guess it was Billy paying the bills. <laughs> it was Billy paying the bills. Man, if that's what you make on a bank teller fucking gig, so I, I need to I think, honestly... My- when I looked at it, it was like $9 an hour. Yeah. So. <laughs> so I totally thought about doing it during it college because I was certified. So. In a small town like that, that was probably either her parents' house or the dad's parents' house. Yeah. And they just they knock kinda, them off so they got a place to live. No, yeah, absolutely, we're not going that dark. They oh. left it to him, and then they just had to keep up the bills. And Dad was all fucking into his inventions, and Mom was what the fuck was Mom doing? She just baking all damn day. Damn bitch, get a job anyway. Leonard Gremlin, I mean, <laughs> she's badass though. She turned into Sigourney Weaver as hell. There. So that's why I said I, I look at Steph while we're watching. I'm like, you know what? That could be Ellen Ripley's mom right there. But I'll tell you whose mom she really is. But anyway. Yeah, Billy's just making the bills, man. He's paying that electric bill. He's doing whatever. And he's living in the fucking attic. You know, I've been like, you guys get in the attic. This is my house. <laughs> but I'm not a nice person. So anyway, here shows up fucking Corey Feldman. Young ass Corey Feldman. I'm just calling him Corey Feldman. I don't even remember what his fucking name is in the movie. Yeah, you already broke your role. I was going to call him by their movie names. Ah, Pete. Pete. Here comes Pete, Corey Feldman, in the fucking tree with the Christmas tree to be decorated. That was a badass costume. I want a Christmas tree costume like that. I do, too. <laughs> I want to scare people. With yeah, I mean, God damn, it looked real, you know? <laughs> oh, look at this tree. And they start touching him like, man, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, fuckers. So anyway, he comes up there. He's like, check out my pet. Immediately, water gets spilled on him. Shit hits the fan. I don't know. The funny thing is that does Pete ever really have to deal with any of the... You never see him interacting with the gremlins. He's kind of the one that caused the whole fucking thing. Yeah, I don't... Did he even make an appearance after that? We saw him in the school when the teacher ran him off. When yeah. the wanted more metamorphorized. I know I'm jumping ahead. I'm sorry. And then I want to say... I don't think we did see him. No. The rest of the movie. After the, a couple of school things... Corey you never Feldman saw- came in, fucked it all up like Jar Jar Binks and Tony. The Jar Jar Binks, Binks and man. Gremlins. <laughs> we figured out who he is. Does he get a douche point for that? <laughs> no, but that's a whole other category. The Jar Jar Binks of the movie. I like, yeah. I like the Where they just stumble into fucking everything They fuck else. everything up. And you're like, you know what? Somebody just would have put a bullet in that motherfucker's yeah. head. None of this would have happened. So, I dig that too, the Jar Jar. Like, he fucking bumbles in to create the whole story. <laughs> in the commentary for the movie, Joe Dante actually stated that Corey Feldman was at this point, before he was a teenage kid, he was actually one of the best child actors in Hollywood. I always liked Corey Feldman. I thought it was cool. He had per- uh, almost perfect timing to everything he did. I mean, he was in some classics. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think it's a bad comment, but he did fuck up everything in that bounce. Yeah, he was Jar Jar. Yeah, yeah. He Jar Jar that shit. <laughs> so then, boom, five new Mogwai. And so Bert and I were having this discussion, and we both agree on what happened. So Gizmo is cute and adorable, sweet angel. And then five Mogwai show up. Not gremlins. Mogwai show up, but they're dicks. Why? So Bert and I broke it down. This is our theory. We figured it out. We figured it that we think we're a hundred percent on the money. So Gizmo's probably hundreds of years old. He's like Yoda. Oh god, don't bring it up! I can't even fucking <laughs> talk about that shit right now. He's like Yoda, but not as green. <laughs> I can't even talk about that shit right now. We'll get on the Mandalorian later. But anyway. <laughs> so He's probably hundreds of years old. They're just dick kids, right? They don't know what the fuck's going on. So somebody kept Yoda, or Yoda, God damn it, see, you fucking <laughs> did it to me. So yes. somebody kept Gizmo out of trouble long enough for him to mature, mature and become a little angel. So if they'd have kept these Mogwai, the new one, the five new ones, out of fucking bullshit and kept them from eating after midnight, they might have grown up to be good Mogwai. Yeah, but so. instead, they ate after midnight. Because remember, he's keeping him in a box. Right? Gizmo is an angel, but he's keeping him in a box. 
Why? Gizmo's used to the box. He probably had to be kept out of mischief for a really long time for him to grow up to fucking mature. Yeah, I mean, they're like wild, crazy teenagers. I mean, they were just wanting to get their inks off and all yeah. everything, you know? And then if and they, then they just live went, long enough, they could be like, Gizmo, and calm down, be chill, be responsible, adult with a full-time job. But instead, he found a way to eat after midnight, and then it was game fucking over. Or once you go fucking Gremlin, you can't go back to Mogwai. And I guess it was never like they were like intentionally doing it to turn to gremlins. They were just fucking hungry. Yeah. Well, I think it was mischievous. I mean, like, oh, we know we're not supposed to, but we're going to because like yeah, which Gizmo is a flat says, thing. no, no, no. He was like, he, he was okay. I guess you're not hungry, Giz. But the other ones are like, nom, 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 now. Yeah, they knew they weren't supposed to. They were children. I mean, I just, I really feel yeah. like that's a very so if strong. if Billy, if they hadn't have fucked up and they hadn't have fed him, I mean, I, eventually they would have fucked up. I mean, like, night one with fucking Gizmo, and that shit's already hitting the fan. It was fucking inevitable. But the thing is that we figured out is if they breed so fucking rapidly, why is there only one Gizmo? Time. And all the others got fucking killed because they ended up getting fucking food after midnight. And became fucking gremlins. And you can't have them around. So basically, once they ate after midnight, they metamorphosized within yes. hours. Because a butterfly doesn't go back to a caterpillar. So well, again, yeah. back to your, like, this is not reality. Yeah, so yeah, It's yeah. here for reality. Like, so if I'm in the Pacific time zone. If they'd I mean, just come back to dark. eating after midnight. But yeah, listen, I was like, does that align up come, like astral projections? They should have just said fucking, eating after dark. Then, then, then after sunrise, I mean, it's okay. They can eat again. They can have breakfast. Yeah. Even though it's after midnight. I mean, come on. <laughs> but like you said, we got to be, this is just a film. Just yeah. enjoy it what it is. Exactly. Because if you pick everything, you're not going to enjoy it. Oh, no, you're going to be so pissed. Yeah. You're going to be so pissed. <laughs> yeah, so then Billy takes his dad to see the other uh, Mogwai still. And there's five new ones, and they're like, oh, it breeds so rapidly. Hmm, the Pelter pet. Like, he's ready to fucking... Spend, cash in. Cash in on this shit immediately. And I'm like, Bleh! I mean, gotta pay the bills, right? <laughs> Fuck, that's what I'd be thinking. We just add water? Yeah. Really? <laughs> I would yeah. think the same thing. Get the wrote, hose, honey! <laughs> I, I wrote, has Rand never seen trouble with Tribbles? <laughs> with tribbles are cute little creatures. I could totally... But at this time, we don't know they're about to fucking bow out gremlins. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd be so. freaking, like, throwing them in the shower. You I know? would, but too. But even, <laughs> even though trebles were cute little fucking things, like, it got out of hand with the, with the multiplying. So that's why I wrote, has Rand never seen trouble with tribbles? So anyway. So Billy decides to take one of the Mogwai to the teacher for testing to find out what the fuck's going on. Because of all the adults in that goddamn house, shit just comes springing out of the back of the new fucking pet. And the only one fucking concerned is Billy. <laughs> so he does the thing that he thinks is going to help and he takes it to the science teacher to get it looked at. Meanwhile, shit is hitting the fan. This is when Mr. Futterman, Murray... The next door neighbor mm-hmm. has his rant about gremlins being in shit and breaking everything. Turns out he was right. Mm-hmm. But, so what happens? All right. I'm trying to remember in order of what happens. All right. So the fuckers left at the house get to eat. And they go into the pupil stage. And then the science teacher leaves the sandwich on the counter. And oh, the one at the school was. eats. Yeah. And, and googly then he, eyes eats that one. Yeah. And he goes into his pupil stage. But it's the one at the school that cracks first. Because remember, they're watching that video, and then it cracks, and then the ones at home crack. Was that Spike at the school? or what? No, that was the googly eye Spike one. was oh, at okay. home. Yeah. Makes me think of the hyena from uh, Lion King, you know? Yeah. Ed. Ed. Yeah. yeah. Or Link, our cat. Yeah, Link. Dumb like that, too. Definitely. So, nom, 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 in between nom, nom, this nom. happening, before shit hits the fan, Billy walks Kate home, and you find out Kate hates Christmas, but she doesn't explain. And then Billy grows a pair and, and asks, asks her, her out. out. And she says, yes. Because as we Go Billy. discovered, yeah. <laughs> Kate Lucky has dude. decent taste in men. She's Not the double douche. Okay? So, even though they were worried about her becoming an epitome, epitome of morality in this movie because of her fucking part in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, she's very moral. And she came off very sweet. 
And she has decent taste in men. Yeah. She's, and that movie is the one you take on the mom. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because you know the down and dirty. Yeah. And, and, yeah. You can take her home to mom too and drop dead Fred. Just tell her she's medicated. Yeah, you know that doesn't work out so well anymore. So. So it ended up. We've got, according to my list here in the trivia, a four body count for this movie. That's four dead bodies. Four dead bodies. Only one, four. two, three, four. <laughs> Teach the teacher number one. So he's dead there after one. He's he, like, I got this fucking candy bar because immediately you're a science teacher, you're gonna give shit chocolate. Yeah, it's gonna, an animal. You no, can't no. give a fucking dog a candy bar. He's like, come eat this <laughs> in the dark on his knees, reaching under a dark desk, trying to feed something he doesn't know what it looks like. <laughs> Go back to play, buddy. I know you like it. Oh, you like it. <laughs> yeah, so body count number one. The dead science teacher. The dead science teacher. <laughs> but he did get a chance to call Billy and tell Billy it hatched. And so Billy's on his way to the school. Dum, dum, dum. Dum, dum, dum. It was a Snickers bar, too, by the way, if anybody is curious. Nothing satisfies. Oh, you know what? Why has oh this Snickers not Why jumped on that? Why didn't he go that? back to a Mogwai? Exactly. He should have gone back to a Mogwai. Like they should have been in a car, and, and the guy's like, eh, I got like a gremlin. They here, have a Snickers. You'll feel better. Then he's freaking gizmo. <laughs> that <laughs> is like marketing. I am. That is patent. Snickers, <laughs> you need to come contact me. You are welcome to that for a price of 150 k Okay? Yeah, just to keep it off so. the market or use it. it <laughs> yeah, whatever matter. you want. Whatever you want. Now that we have Gremlins and one Mogwai, let's talk about trivia. Gizmo and Stripes was supposed to be the same Gremlin. So they were going to turn Gizmo? They were going to turn Gizmo. Oh, man. But Steven Spielberg stepped in and he said, nah, bitch. Good call, Steven Spielberg. He's exactly. fucking adorable. We need a solid good guy and a solid bad guy. Joe Dante wanted to make this movie fucking dark. Yeah. Really? Joe Dante. So, I mean, he came from the howling, right? Yeah, yeah. So, his thing was, the gremlins were going to kill Barney. Well, that scene where the fucking dog was tied up from the Christmas lights. I was like, damn. He was going to die. Remember the Christmas lights when he was strangling mom? Yeah. It was going to decapitate her. Wow, this dude was going all in. Yeah, and then Holy Steven shit. Spielberg's like, pull back, pull back. So I feel like that combination of Spielberg and Dante worked perfect. Worked oh, perfect, yeah. because when Dante was off the fucking chain, Spielberg's like, pull back. Yeah, when yeah. Dante's like, let's make it dark, Spielberg's like, we need a little light in this. It's fucking Christmas. Perfect example of a good collaboration. Yes. Yes, very much yes, so. Yes, I felt like those two working together on this was Perfect. Yeah. And that'll come into play in a minute, too. So, Billy's on his way. He finds Mr. Hansen. Kabosh. With a syringe in his butt. In his butt cheek. Well, so. you don't fucking... <laughs> you really don't want to take blood samples from an animal and then expect it not to stab you in the ass. With so, him. we don't know... We don't know if the gremlin killed Mr. Hansen. I think he killed him and then By eating that his needle. finger. Or if he gave him a shot of something after knocking him out. We don't well, know. For, he, took, real. he took a blood test. He didn't give him any medicine. So my theory is he pulled him under there. There was like some slash and throat shit and some bleeding out shit. And then just for good measure, like you stuck me, I stick you, bitch. And he fucking <laughs> jabbed that needle into his ass cheek. Because yeah, that part, as well as some other parts that we'll talk about later in the movie, I really, you didn't see the, the details. The gore. The gore. And I think they helped keep that budget at $11 million. Yeah, yeah. Well, Very you, smart by Spielberg and Whenever Dante. they're like, mm, too much blood, they make it a different color. Well, the only blood that you see besides some scra- scra- scrapes, Jesus fucking Christ, scrapes and scratches on people is the gremlin's blood, yeah. which is fucking green, which I feel is how they maintain that PG-13. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, Billy finds Mr. Hansen, and now the gremlins are going after Mom. So mom's just fucking baking some goddamn gingerbread cookies like a saint in the kitchen, just doing her mom thing. She hears some shit. She goes upstairs, busted open cocoons, and then random Christmas music. Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? Bitch, I do. Do You You need to get your ass downstairs. Mm -hmm. Then she turns into fucking Ellen Ripley. And she fucks up these great ones. Some badass kitchen kills. Yeah. (laughs) So... I wrote down the kill order. She gets the one in the juicer. Should we rank them? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about them all and then we'll rank them. Okay. Number one, she gets the one in the juicer. Number two, 
The one that's throwing plates at her and she uses that fucking TV tray as a fucking shield. She stabs the fuck out of him. <laughs> Three <Hell yeah>. microwave <laughs> and four Billy shows up and hits the one with the sword and he goes into a fireplace and burns up. <laughs> <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> you should see the skull burn yeah. in the fireplace. Yeah, it's still kind of shaking and shit. All right, so. That's Ooh. the part of the movie where I started getting pumped. Yeah, like, yeah. Yes, now you're yeah. like, there's this build up. You're like, God damn it. It's kind of depressing because you're like, Billy's getting hardcore shit on. Half the people in this town are a dick. And then shit starts popping off and you're like, fine. Yes. So, who wants to go first in ranking the first Gremlin kills? I'm going to say blender, microwave, knife kill, and then fireplace. Brad. I'm going to go microwave, fire, blender, knife. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go reverse, worst to best, fireplace, juicer, microwave, stab. Now the reason I put stab at my top. Because you're boring. The look (laughs) on that gremlin's face. (laughs) <laughs> you might seem pretty fucking surprised Like damn this bitch got a knife <laughs> This human's just stabbing the shit out of me Like what the fuck She <laughs> cut my ass <laughs> Now when you put it like that I, I might have to rank it higher <laughs> When she goes after that fucking thing He just thinks it's all fun and games right He's like this is fucking hilarious I'm throwing plates at this bitch And then she fucking gets up there And he's out of plates And she rears back and he's like I'm fucked and then the look on her face as she's stabbing the fucking shit out of this thing. That is why stabbed ends up my number one. Yeah. But the microwave was super gruesome. So was the juicer and the fire. So those are... I was just happy to see they got the juicer working. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, <Right. really? laughs> I mean, That's what I was at. I was like, wow, is it, it worked. That's awesome. <laughs> I was like, when he first went in, I'm like, this fucking thing ain't going to work and this bitch is dead. But it worked. So, but yeah, the look on that gremlin's face when she went after him <laughs> with the knife. I'll never forget that. <laughs> it was the best thing ever. Oh, my God. Billy shows up. Sword fight. Gremlins are dead. Except for one. The leader. Stripes. He busts ass out the window. Billy takes mom to the doctors and just fucking leaves her there. Take care of my mom. I'm out. And they go to hunt down Stripes. Technically, besides Gizmo, he's the last one. Now, he finds, when he goes back to the house, he finds Gizmo in the laundry chute. So, one of the reasons why he's missing from that whole part And then the rest of the fucking movie, he's almost always in Billy's backpack, is because of that part where he was supposed to be Stripes. So there wasn't that middle ground for a while with him in the movie because he was going to be the bad guy. He was the bad guy. Okay. Interesting. Also, the scene where the other gremlins put him up on the dartboard and throw darts at him. The cast, or the the crew, had a list of ways to hurt Gizmo. Well, no, but the funny thing was, they hated him. Not because he was so cute and whatever, but because he's a fucking, like a little robot. And he kept fucking breaking down. Yeah. (laughs) So he gets so pissed, and then they'd shoot a scene where the other gremlins fuck with him, and it would make the crew feel better. (laughs) It's <laughs> more Yoda baby cuteness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> they hunt down Stripes, and mm. they find him in the YMCA. The dick jumps in the pool. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and now it's fucking on. So, it's... At this point here, you really start to have to appreciate the clay stop animation with the gremlins. Like, I know there's animation. Because, well, you... Then, but when there's, like, a lot the of them... Yeah, yeah. walking up the street. Yeah. yeah. The streetlight's coming down perfectly, and then, boom, Stripe comes in the yeah. light. And then all of them, and you're like, shit! You can totally tell. It's like a matte painting in the background, too. I love that shot. I, I do, too. I think it's just so <laughs> it's, cool. It's yeah. definitely an iconic shot. I really, really like it. But, so, Billy goes to the police, and he's like, there's fucking gremlins, and the cops are drunk, and they're like, nah. But there is. And then, of course, <laughs> they show up to fuck with Murray and his wife. Now, originally, they were supposed to die. Didn't they? Mm-mm. 
They're in the second one. They're the ones that called the police later and said that they got attacked by their snowplow. Oh, yeah, okay. Because they busted in. It was set up for them to die. They were supposed to be part of the body count. But they ended up not being. And we're still at one right now, right? Yes, yeah, we okay. still have just the one. Yes, we're still at one. So we have one human, four gremlins down. Okay. So... Don't expect us to keep up with all the gremlins. Dead. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Like, that's like the last count on the gremlins you're all going to get. So they come in, they steal the tractor, and he's like, there's a fucking gremlin in my tractor! <laughs> Which is hilarious. And then you think they're dead, but they're not, because they're the ones that actually call the cops, and then the cops bust ass out of there, and then they see what's going on, and they're like, shit, Billy was right. And then I think they're the other two. Remember when they caused them to wreck their car? I'm pretty sure they're two the on the death, the two cops are on the death kill, and that takes us to three. But there's a cute-ass fucking scene where a priest goes to mail something, and there's one in the mailbox, mm-hmm. and then he's like, what the fuck? And that other guy comes up. That priest lets him stick his fucking hand <laughs> in that mailbox, knowing that there might be some hinky shit in there. <laughs> Which is pretty cool to him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then, the gremlins go to Mrs. Diggles. <laughs> so first of all, all of her cats are named after billionaires and money. Did you notice that? No, nah, I didn't even pick up on yeah, that. Yeah, all her cats' names are... She's even got a cat named Dollar Bill. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. All of her fucking cats are named after Dollar Bill. When she runs out there, because the fucking carolers, and then she realizes they're gremlins, ugh, the look of horror on her face just gave me such joy. And then when they fuck with that chair, and it shot her the fuck out of there, and then this is when the chief and the deputy die they see her fucking dead body in the street after her chair with her body and it shoots out of the fucking house it was a great scene it was so good Mm -hmm. but this is where i feel like we need more of the uh gremlin backstory because the motherfucker knew how to read like right and they're like they're eagle like Like, see i feel like we don't need gremlins three we need gremlins prequels yeah well like i said they filmed like Two hours and 40 minutes of yeah. a movie. And then trimmed it to 160. So maybe and then it's trimmed in there. it to 160. Maybe it's in there. Because honestly, the cutest parts of this movie for me is the gremlins fucking shit up. Yeah. The one fucking with the street lights. The one in the mailbox with the priest. And the, the fucking guy sticking his hand in there. And I feel like they cut a lot of that out. But that's the good part mm-hmm. to me. And again, the gremlin fucking with the lights and causing the car wreck. You hear the car wreck, but you don't see it. Another awesome way to keep the budget down. Yes, totally. You knew what happened. You didn't even see it. No point. So then after the cops die, my favorite scene of the whole fucking movie. The scene in the bar with the gremlins. I feel like I've lived through that. <laughs> <now. It's> just, <laughs> okay, I feel like I have too, and it definitely took place at Ethel's. <laughs> yeah, <there's shit>. <laughs> <laughs> We have lived through that. We have a hundred percent lift through that, but then when that Michael Michael Bello song, Simbello song comes on, and it's super madness and the fucking dancing and the little weird little scenes and the jazz scene and whatever, that whole scene in the fucking bar with those gremlins just being crazy as hell is my favorite part of the oh, whole movie. Oh, it was movie. awesome! But but it leads me to another question: Why would Kate sit in there and serve this? That's what I am. Tilly and Michael Benjamin. I I, I have an answer for that too. Oh, let's hear it. Because I wanted to make some sense of that one. (laughs) What if she stopped? Good point. Yeah, there you go. Killing it with the... Just think, what would you do? The bartender refused to serve you, Brad. (laughs) (laughs) I'd, I'd, I'd probably get upset. <laughs> <laughs> she was keeping them Occupied. under control. Yeah. Oh, they were not under control, right, but they, they were, were not hurting her. Yeah, I mean, she kept on trying to light the one cigarettes. They kept on freaking out, eating the beer nuts, googly eyes, and they're playing poker <laughs> with Stripe. And then the one that fucking flashes her, he opens up the trench coat. Ah! Yeah, the one transvestite. Gremlin. Yeah, man, there's always that one fucking gremlin that's like, I'm a chick! So that's one thing we determined. There are no female gremlins. <coughs> Even if you look back at the second one, you have the one like that takes gr- the, the oh, meds, that looks a- like Nicki Minaj, but it's... It wasn't a female in the no, second? No, it, well, it, it, it became, became one because it drank all the chemicals oh, from the lab. Oh, gotcha. But, in the, but they were all male. In the, the first 2019 one... 2019 gremlin. <gasps> Modernizer Smurfs. <laughs> Gizmo's Papa Smurf. 
No, no. So stripes. No, I'm right. It's like a prison mentality. Stripes is like, and you're my bitch, and then it became a bitch. <laughs> That's what happens when you do a lot of drinking and there ain't no girls around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're my son slash daughter slash my bitch because you came out my back when yeah. I got hydrated. <laughs> yeah, I own you, technically. <laughs> That's fucked up. So then Billy comes in, saves Kate with the fucking... Bright lights! <laughs> Bright lights! Well, Bright she used the Polaroid. She used the Polaroid. She did. She was holding her own there. She was holding her own there. Um, and then they run to the bank. And this is where the story happens yeah. about her dad. Good lord. So. That was some sad shit. Spielberg did not want that scene to be left in the movie. It was kind but of. But Dante put his foot down. No, I appreciated it. Because this whole fucking movie. That's why we're doing this near Christmas. This whole fucking movie is a Christmas gone fucking wrong. Yeah. It was such a sad story. And, dude, the thing that touched my heart the most was when she was like, and we expected them to pull out a cat yeah. or a bird, and instead they pulled out my father. And the gizmo losing his shit over that. I was like, this is the sweetest fucking thing ever. <laughs> he cannot die in this movie. I need him. What a terrible way to find out about... And that's how I found out there was no Santa Claus. Uh, yeah. Right? So Christmas isn't fucking perfect for everybody. Yeah. And you have no idea what the fuck is going to happen. And also, this is a preach out to all the dads that think they're going to surprise their family for kids. Fireplaces are not safe. <laughs> this was probably a safety warning. Yeah, really. But yeah, no. But that was some heavy shit. <laughs> it was super heavy. And it was weird, but they were alone. And like things were super fucking funny back at the bar. All right? You almost kind of like the gremlins. Yeah. You got to bring it back to fucking reality. Shit is not fucking awesome right now. Yeah, yeah. So I thought it was a really great scene, and I'm glad that Dante made him leave it in. Like like I said, this back and forth thing where he's like, let's fucking kill people, and Spielberg is like, wait. And then they're like, oh, Gizmo should be the bad guy, and Spielberg is like, nah, he's fucking cute. And then Dante's like, this is some heavy shit. Spielberg is like, too heavy, and Dante's like, perfect heavy. And then it stays in. And I thought it was appropriate. Agreed. Because the bar scene is my favorite. And then it brings it back to scene. shit. This I'm not supposed to like them. I'm not supposed to. This is Christmas fuckery. So they walk out of the bank. And the town is quiet. Fucking ghost town. Snow on the road. You see the cars all damaged. But you hear an ominous noise from the movie theater. Mm-hmm. The end of the street. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So, they use Snow White and Seven Dwarfs for this scene because, like I said, this movie's supposed to re- launch or release. I say launch like it's a YouTube video. It's supposed to release the week of Christmas. And Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs came out December 21st, 1937. So, they thought it would be fitting. And I wonder how dudes. they got Disney on board. Or I mean, it's Spielberg. To seek out pull with Disney? I feel like he would after E.T., did Disney do E.T.? No, but Spielberg Universal. did. This is Warner Brothers, too. Gremlins is Warner Brothers. I'm going to look it up. You continue talking. I want to see what, what kind of dirt Spielberg's got on Disney. Well, somebody humped somebody they shouldn't. And Spielberg's like, I want Snow White. And it wasn't that many clips. And plus it got... Still, though, man. I mean... So, by Disney the way, so game. this movie, I didn't realize how much I kind of personally had in common with this movie. So Gizmo was my first stuffed animal. Snow White was the first movie my parents ever took me to to see in theaters, which is kind of weird. <laughs> right? Do you think, like, I want to call my mom, but she wouldn't fucking remember. Did you do that on purpose? Because it was kind of fucking fitting. <laughs> Gizmo was my first toy, and then the first movie they ever took me to see in theaters was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Well, apparently Spielberg and Disney had a falling out like three years ago over the BFG, so. Oh, well, they were hard back then, then, so. So, all of a sudden, Billy's like, all right, so, they're digging this fucking movie. And I thought that that was so cute. And then the one that wears the Mickey Mouse ears, that was adorable. And then the eating the popcorn and them singing hi-ho. Again, Brad, with the background. Because how do they know how to sing? How do they know English? That's what I'm telling you, man. That's some good uh, fucking prequel gremlin shit right there. Maybe Everybody knows Spielberg was from Cincinnati? No, I did not know that. Yep. Born in Cincinnati, December 18th, 1946. Interesting. Because I want to say that Chris Columbus lived in Ohio, too. The guy that wrote it. 
Mm-hmm. Huh. So anyway. So Billy's like, oh, they're enjoying it. They're distracted. Where's the fucking boiler? And so they decide to blow up the fucking theater. And they're successful as fuck. Until they look over across the street and in the candy fucking store, in the window, is fucking Stripes. His entire survival was based on him having the fucking munchies. <laughs> Stoner gremlins. I mean, I get it. If they ran out of popcorn at the movie theater, I'd be next door but getting a snack. And, just so we can tie up some other stuff, just so everyone knows, he happens to be in Montgomery Ward, one of the stores I was talking about in yeah. the last podcast. Just thought that was interesting because I've never seen him on in a movie before, and then I'm like, "Hey, there's my reward." I'm not crazy; it really did exist. <laughs> so this is the part where we're basically going down an old McAlpins or Sears and seeing all that old '80s merchandise, right? When yeah, which the by the way, shop. TVs were still fucking expensive. Back then. Yeah, yeah, tube TV. The one was like six hundred dollars. Like I said, they're talking about the snow blower, normally eighteen hundred on sale wow. for eleven ninety nine. This is nineteen eighty three, nineteen eighty four, yeah. y'all. I wouldn't pay those prices now. Yeah, for real. Back then, I mean, hell, that's, that's, that's somebody's monthly salary. Reagan you know? economy, Plus. man. <laughs> the Reagan economy. <laughs> Motherfuckers then, were making bank. And then, not only that, but like, who's ever seen the gun case just right there in the aisle for you to break open the still, you know? Yeah. That's crazy. It was the 80s, baby. God bless him. Who is it? Okay, so Kate takes Gizmo. To go try and turn on the lights. Billy goes after Stripes. Stripes really fucks Billy up. Oh, yeah. Like, big time. Shoots him with the crossbow in the arm with the bolt. <laughs> and never once does Billy think, I'm in a sporting goods store. I should get any fucking thing in here. He picks up a bat. Stripes is like, fucking chainsaw. Which, by the way, when they filmed that scene where he's going after Billy with the chainsaw and he's mm-hmm. fucking cutting up the bat and shit, that was a direct shout out to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Was it? So There's Hottie McHotson and Gizmo go to... Hottie McHotson? Go to <laughs> turn the oh. lights on. And then they ended up turning on that fountain. Yeah. So, the chainsaw gets a better stripes and then he sees the fucking fountain. And then Billy walks in there. He gr- fucking stripes grabs the gun. I don't think Billy knew he had the gun, but he walks in there all fucked up with nothing. Absolutely nothing. He didn't pick up the chainsaw off the floor. And then he comes around and he's like, Billy, and just fucking starts shooting him. And when he sees the gun, he's like, gun. How the fuck does he know it's a gun? Yeah, man. So, all right. (laughs) Two scenes back. They know the hi-ho song. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they hear it, and they're like, hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off door. They've never seen... Once again, Brad, it's not reality. Supposed just to but it can, make, it can make awesome backstory. It would. Because uh, didn't Snow White come out in the 30s? Because, listen, it did, So the Gremlins have been around for a while. They the were in World War II. we talked about how old Gizmo is? I like the way you're thinking. Yeah, man, World War II meets Gremlins. Do you remember how... Badass prequel. It could be. Do you remember how Gizmo's super old... So what if it's like handed down DNA? They're from each other. Genetic memory? Genetic memory. I'm writing the fucking prequel for <laughs> Gremlins. I'm doing it. It's happening. And we're going to film it right after we do no. Dan the Worm Wrangler. No, you're going to write it down. We're going to try to sell it as a And pilot, then somebody's going to be like, this is too good. To make it and, and we're just going to make money off of it every five years. All right, hell gotcha. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Make that money, honey. Sorry, back in Montgomery Ward. Billy's hurt. He's scratched up. He's got a bolt in his arm. The fountain's going. Stripes is like, time to multiply. And then here comes Gizmo to fucking save the day in the little fucking Barbie car. Pause. That Barbie car was badass. Yes, it was. But there was no remote control, and Gizmo was driving, driving it. it. Yeah. So, again, continuity. Curious. I don't care. How good and old his jeans and shit were. There ain't no way he made that car go vroom, vroom, vroom. Well, remember when the Mogwai first popped out of his back? They were playing a video game under the Christmas tree. Understand, not saying he can't drive. He learned from the video game. I get it. But that car didn't have a motor in it. It didn't have a turning wheel. It didn't have pedals that worked. We get it. Okay. 
So there must be some Mogwai magic. Going. Yes, something. Mogwai, Mogwai magic. magic. Can it be explained in the sequel? Or the prequel, I'm sorry. We will expri- explain it the explain prequel. Explain it all. So, I just realized, what level of douchebag is Stripe? I'm giving him... Because we have said there's only two, but technically, I mean, there are three bad guys in this film. Yeah. Yes, there are. We, we have to rank them. So we got a double douche, we got a quintuple cunt. Honestly... Stripe's pretty high. Yeah, he's pretty high, but they didn't kill Barney. They didn't kill Barney. They didn't kill Gizmo. But that one gremlin was cheating at the poker table. And he shot him in the head. And he shot head. him in the head. And if Steven he made that one, there. Yeah, he <laughs> made that one gremlin his bitch. He I mean, did. So now he's a sexual predator. <laughs> he is going up the list of douchebag. Right. He's So we got a double douche, a quintuple cunt. I'm going to go quintuple douche. I'm going to say quad um, the quintuple. I'm going to say four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half star douche, okay? Yeah. Because they start shooting at Billy. Yeah. They did. But anyway, so Gizmo's <laughs> coming to save the day. And originally, Billy was supposed to save the day. And Spielberg's like, nah, bitch. <laughs> Gizmo's the hero. So he pulls down the thing, and, and then they're like, You know why? Because the hero gets an extra 15% bonus, and Gizmo's just a robot. Yeah. You, pay, <laughs> you ain't gonna pay the robot no bonus money. Yeah. Keeping that budget down. That's right. Yeah, it is. Eleven million dollars. Remember that, folks. During the filming of this, as the crew and the cast would leave for the day, security checked all their bags because each one of those gremlins cost them like five grand a piece to make. Wow. And they didn't want people stealing the fucking animatronics. They, they probably cost like twenty, thirty grand nowadays. Oh yeah. Uh, oh fuck yeah. Oh, they but they CGI, CGI it all, it all anyway. Yeah, yeah, they CGI it all. That's right. Yeah, they would. We're not going to CGI everything in our prequel. Just see Definitely not. I like man. a little we're, bit we're t- old school. I mean, you'd have to do the mix nowadays, I guess. But yeah, it's got to be a lot of puppets. We should do it like South Park animation with construction paper. That would be tight. <laughs> that would be fucking cool. <laughs> that would be cool. So anyway, he's a bubbling, nasty mess. And he's dying, even though he's in the water. And he's not. Well, yeah, he's hurt. But he's like, gotta make some babies. He's a horny thing. Water gets him <laughs> off. He is, I guess so. So then this whole thing... So Gizmo saves the day, and then Kate shows up, and Billy's just standing there, and then Dad shows up out of fucking nowhere. This whole time since shits hit the fan, you just get these random little scenes where Dad's kind of making his way home. He's at a convention. He's at a gas station. And I kept waiting for him to get there and save the day, and he just showed up at the very fucking end. Stripes is about to fall out of the water fountain and fucking completely dissolve. Which was one of the coolest scenes. Yes. Yeah. For and that, that sound, that wah, as he's fucking dissolving and shit, I love that fucking sound. But yeah, dad just shows up and it's fucking over. And it's like, why did we have to know he was on his way home? Not only that, but we just, we, the narrator wasn't there for over half of the freaking film. No, 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 no. Like, point... Two percent of the movie, this dude was out of town. So we don't even know if this is what would really happen. It could all be hearsay. It can be conjecture, like the impeachment trial, right? Now. Certain <laughs> like point of view. Trial. It's all conjecture. I presumed. I presumed this is what happened. I presumed. All right, enough politics. So we, we could come with like a Gremlins movie, and like this is what happened. This is what really happened. <laughs> so instead of doing a prequel, we should film it in like the eyes of one of the other characters. Yeah, yeah, that would be tight, dude. I like. Well, Corey Feldman fucked off. Pete fucked off. I like Flutterman. I like Murray, man. Yeah, he's a stud. He was in Demon we should find. We should find yes. out what happened to Murray when Make they drove the fucking him. tractor in his damn house. <laughs> well, we know he survived because they're in the second well, one. And then there's so. this huge scene from where they run to the bar. They run out of the bar. But Everything's it's, fucking nuts. When he sees the gremlins, like he knew they were the gremlins, what? so he's seen them before. Yeah. And he, didn't he fight in a war? Maybe it's Maybe a fucking <laughs> PTSD thing and he has a flashback. Alright, we're going to add this in. Flutterman is going to be in our fucking prequel. The main prequel. character. <laughs> so, when they run out of the bar... It's fucking nuts. Gremlins are on people. People are running the streets. And then when they come out the bank, ghost town. Mm. What the fuck happened in between? If we only have a four-person body count, who saved all the rest of these fucks? And why did all the gremlins go to watch that goddamn movie? Flutterman, man. Or Futterman. <laughs> I'm thinking but he behind, behind the scenes was instrumental in keeping our body count for this movie down to four. 
So he was the unsung hero of this film. So I, I, I know what he looked like there, but if they were to do a remake, you know who Flutterman would be now for me? Flutterman. Flutterman. Yeah, it's Flutterman. Bruce Campbell. Nice. Ah, yeah! <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would work. Right? Like, if I was going to do a reboot... Oh. I know the reboot word is terrible with us, but if I was going to reboot Gremlins, <laughs> Bruce Campbell, baby. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Um, I'm on board with that 100%. Bruce Campbell, man. Okay. I am on board with that. So then... It's over. It's over. The and Mr. Mr. Wing shows up, Gizmo. and he's like, I fucking told you, asshole. He didn't even knock on the door, did he? No, and then you're like... Yeah, rude ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they took his shit. You get shot for doing his that shit nowadays. His grandson sold it. It's a legit business transaction. Well, if your son sold your car, you ain't going after it all pissed off? Yeah. They took his shit. And the man said, and it no, wasn't... bad example. If you <laughs> sold Odin... It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> no, listen. Let's say some man knocked on our door right now. It's like, hey, man, can I buy your car? And you're like, no, that's my fucking car. I love it. I just bought it. And the is <laughs> like, mm, meet me out back. <laughs> you're going to be pissed at that dude because you already told him no. And you're going to be pissed at your kid because he sold your fucking car. That grandpa, Mr. Wing, had every right to be pissed off because he told fucking Peltzer no. And then he told his grandson no. And they both went behind his fucking back. Yeah. That would piss me off, too. All right. I'll give you that one. So then they walk down. The, I love the scene where he's walking down the street in the moonlight and everything. And it's Christmas, officially. The shit is done. The gremlins are I dead. I love that shot. He's, yeah. He, Mr. Oh, Wings got so gizmo. Good. He's like, let's get this shit back in order. And then it's a beautiful Christmas night, man. Yeah, you know that what I mean? fucking shot, man. That town, the and he's moon. Just, he's just rolling out. Just yeah, walked yeah. in there. It's God cool. knows how fucking far. Took him like what two three days to fucking get there. He's gonna spend his Christmas on the side of the fucking road, waiting for a bus or some shit because his goddamn grandson and two hundred fucking dollars. <laughs> I'd be I'd have beat that kid fucking black and blue. But anyway, <laughs> it was a beautiful shot, and then the movie's over. No, yep. and that dope ass theme music fucking starts the credits. All right, so we got some facts I'll discuss, and you can give... I'll ask the questions, and I will let you answer the facts, because you were very... I got deep into the trivia on this fucking movie. I got very deep, deep in while we were watching it. So, was Joe Dante the first choice for this film? No. Please, Stephanie, tell us more. Steven Spielberg's first choice... Was... Tim Burton. Oh, wow. He really liked his short films, but he went with Dante instead of Burton because at that point, Burton had only done Frank and Weenie. He had not done a full length film yet. Holy shit, man. I wonder what that would have looked I, I don't know. I love we, what they We did tried with it. to wrap our head around it. And I, I, I get notes that make me think very Tim Burton. Like yeah. when I hear some of the music cues, it sounds like Danny Elfman, which is Tim Burton's go to music guy. Oh, yeah. And there's a scene, it's like. That feels Tim Burton. That that last shot, I was talking about how much I love so much look Tim Burton. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, see, I don't know if it would have changed too much. The problem is, I don't want to like even think about imagining what it would have been Tim Burton style because I liked. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! The huge Christmas clash. No, absolutely. The the Spielberg Dante thing was. I never perfect. knew that, but yeah, that is fucking perfect. But it would have been interesting. It would have, it would have, but a a a Tim Burton eighties film would be slightly different. So Mr. Peltzer would probably be Michael Keaton. Yeah. That was his go to guy. Johnny Depp would be some fucking where. No, well he'd be Pete. He'd be Pete. He'd be Pete instead of Corey Feldman. Yeah, because you got to remember in the eighties. He didn't work with Johnny Depp. It wasn't until in the early 90s. Yeah. Michael Keaton was his man. Mm -hmm. I mean, Beetlejuice, Batman. I mean, Michael Keaton was freaking Burton's man. And then he went to Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp became his new guy. So, But yeah, I could totally see that. Then uh, another uh, question, Stephanie. So what happened to that old man banker guy? Was there any, like, maybe cut scenes with him in the film? Yes. So in the scene where they run into the bank from the bar... The bank's fucked. The gremlins have already been there tearing shit up. It must have been cut out from where the the whole scene where they come into the bank and fuck shit up. Because in the movie, the main banker dude, Mrs. Deagle's bitch, he went back and locked himself in the, in the vault to keep the gremlins from getting him. 
And at the very end, end of the movie, when everything's calmed down, everything's closed for Christmas, that dude is still locked in the vault, losing his fucking mind. (laughs) And I thought that was dark, but I liked it. But I'm glad it didn't happen. I'm glad it ended the way that it did. So how did they get that dude on board after he did... Um, or the Howling. Why did that fucking... But yeah, how did they get him on board? Like, I don't even know. Did they say, like, you could do it your own way with all these apparently, little creatures and then... Apparently, Spielberg was a huge Howling fan. Really? So I imagine he went to Dante and was like, bro, we should work together. Because I'm throwing a little horror into Christmas. And I really Spielberg liked Spielberg was already like a big deal at this time, right? Oh, yeah. He had done Jaws. And he had done Jaws, uh, uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, everything else. And E.T. Was E.T. already out? Yeah, the year before this. Okay. So. Had he done any of the Indiana Joneses yet? No, but, well, yeah. he was doing it. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom would come out the Christmas after okay. this. So this came out June 8th. So I guess dudes like Steven Spielberg just offered me a gig. Like he turned it. Yeah, no, he's not turning that shit down. Yeah, absolutely, fucking not. Well, I'm glad they worked together. So apparently, Dante did a Police Squad, a TV show, before Spielberg invited him to join directing the team in a mythology movie, Twilight Zone, the movie. So that's where their working relationship started. Was there, and then Gremlins soon afterwards. So does anybody else have anything else to say about the movie? Oh, well, it's a movie I'll remember for always. I mean, it was definitely mm-hmm. a big deal in my childhood. Well, question. If it had been a while since you'd seen it, does it hold water? Yes. I enjoyed water. it, yeah. yeah. It, it still was holds really water. good. It absolutely still holds water. There's yeah. a lot of movies for me that don't. Yeah. That one did. As a matter of fact, like, going back now and then looking up the trivia for it and everything, I realize now that it actually meant more to me now than it did back then because I thought Whoa. it was just a fun, awesome movie. Learning but these he, things, I appreciate it even more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. And then so too, far, you know, I never made that connection about my first toy and my first movie, and it's all there. And then I'm like, hey, bitches, this be stuff in childhood going on. Yeah, motherfucking Gremlins is my childhood. Although my town was a little bit, I mean, smaller. I, I still buy the action figures. I got the. Gremlin Carolers a couple weeks ago. I love That's the Gremlin cool. Carolers. They're tight. Yeah. See, they, they, they pull you back. They're like, they're fucking adorable. No, they're horrible. No, they're fucking adorable. Yeah. No, they're fucking horrible. I don't know who to love them or hate them, but I know who to hate. So, I don't want a Gremlin. I want a Mogwai. And he's yeah. a little rotten bastard. He's going in a cage <laughs> until he gets old enough to mature a little bit and be as cool as Gizmo. I'm telling you, the reason they're little brats is because they're, they're young, young. And they're just like terrible two children. I mean, they're just evil little kids. Once they get a little older, we don't know how long that is. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're assuming Gizmo could be super old, but he may only be a decade old. We don't know. No, I'm telling you, Gizmo's hundreds of years old. Did you see the old man in there? They've known each other for a while. Yeah, because... Gizmo was probably gifted to that man when he was a baby, and he was already mature. I'm telling you, man, Gizmo's hundreds of years old. I like the prequel idea better. That guy was fighting the Japs in World War II, <laughs> and the Gremlins were like messing up his plane or whatever, and then he killed them all. And, like Gizmo was the only one that like he surrendered, and he's like, "Okay, you killed my fellow comrades." I'm like, <laughs> was done. That's why it's so violent in the second one. Rambo. Hell yeah! <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to talk about your ideas for the prequel. You know what? You just shut. Demerit. Demerit. Demerit your ass. Demerit. <laughs> Demerit. Demerit. <laughs> Demerit. Uh, we're going to do Christmas movies till December's over. So on our movie wheel, it's all Christmas movies. So it's going to get interesting. Well, the ones we know of are Christmas movies. Then there's four mystery... Boxes. Boxes that are more likely Christmas films. Yes. It's probably the same Christmas film. You know what? If you want to check out the movies on our movie wheel... You're going to have to go to our fucking Facebook page or our Instagram. But I want to give some hints. Twitter. I want to give some hints. I'm not going to give out the movies. So this film here that I'm pointing at, I just looked up. Chris Columbus, not the ocean blue guy, helped write. But the guy that wrote, oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. No yeah. Shit. The guy that wrote Gremlins also wrote that. that. That's another yep. classic. All right. We go up to this one right here that I'm pointing at. That one there. This, this will probably give it away, but a little bit of Billy Bob Thornton. Santa that smokes the most. One of my favorites. <laughs> I'll go to this one where... Ah, uh, a poor orphan gets to meet his father after growing up and becoming too big for the rest of his friends. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Newhart, too, by the way. So, All right, then this one, 
uh, remake recently with uh, the Benedict Cumberslut, but we're talking about the original version. Benedict, beautiful Benedict Cumberbatch. Huh? All right, so we're going to skip the mystery boxes. There are four mystery boxes. And all my all time. Arthur's controversial most, Christmas movie. Nothing's controversial. This is absolutely a Christmas film. Okay, we film. know it's a Christmas film, but everybody. Knows. And Hans Gruber will agree this that is, is a, Christmas, a film. Christmas film. And then. Hot chocolate! 4D senses at the zoo, right? Everyone's had the 4D experience. Yes. 4D experience at the zoo, the Cincinnati Zoo. You Cincinnatians, you'll know what that film is. Unless you're a crackhead and can't go to the zoo because you ain't got money. So you might not be able to know that. So. Hey, the zoo's <laughs> fucking expensive. All you got to do is just be minimum wage. You ain't got to be a crackhead and not be able to go to the zoo. Yeah, well, crackheads live really close, though. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to be careful where you park at the zoo. Oh, yeah. Because of the crackheads, but... Yeah, so those are the films. Like I said, there's four mystery boxes. So there's six films for sure, then four mysteries. Could Stephanie give us some hints on the mysteries? I made it all up. Oh, she doesn't have a clue. So let's talk, other than what's on here, let's talk about controversial Christmas movie. What is something somebody calls a Christmas movie, and you're like, eh. Because people will be like, Gremlins isn't Christmas, but yeah, it totally no, is. your sister said, Gremlins isn't really a Christmas movie. I'm like, bitch, are you kidding me? It absolutely is. Look, that's my sister. All the good went to me. The rest of the siblings? That is true. Not so much. My brother, he might have locked out. Also, our movie wheel is going to be needing a little tweaking. I spend it too much today and things are getting fucked up. Yeah, Stephanie broke her creation. I did, and I just finished it. But uh, Christmas films. What's not a Christmas film? Well, it could be made the argument a lethal weapon, but I do not consider... Jingle Bell Rock is at the beginning of that film. I know. Totally Christmas. And Well, but you name another controversial Christmas movie. Uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. People say it's Halloween It's movie. got Christmas in it. People say it's a Halloween movie. It's 50% Halloween, People 50% Christmas. People say it's a Halloween movie. Um, James Bond, the one with uh, Charlie Sheen's ex-wife. Her name was Christmas. Oh, Jesus. Fuck. People call her, <laughs> don't call her that Christmas movie. And Bond makes Christmas come twice a year, so... Are you fucking kidding me? Anyway, <laughs> all right. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to spin this movie wheel. I already did it. I broke it. And we're going to pick our next movie to review. But if you want to see, if you want to know ahead of time Daddy. what movie it landed on, you're going to have to check us out. On Instagram or Facebook. On Facebook. Because we can't do YouTube. Because, well, if you're watching the last episode, you know why. Yeah, there's a really good chance Potty Mouths won't exist on YouTube after December And I heard some other stuff, too. And this can be a bitch session in the future because... Man, YouTube was getting dirty even before this, I just found out. So, All right, so, spin the wheel. Spin Do you want to record wheel. it for spin Facebook? The wheel. Spin so the So that wheel. way the people that want to know ahead of time what we're doing. And go. And the film's going to be... If you want to know ahead of time what movie we're going to be reviewing next for Christmas, you're going to have to check out our socials, but we would like to thank Purple Planet, Podbean and Podbean app, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeart, not YouTube anymore. You well, we're can, still there. It's just, they're a bunch of bastards. Yeah, we may not be there for long. <laughs> uh, you can email us at pottymouths at gmail.com, which, by the way, you should email us or get a hold of us on our show, socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, because we have a mystery box number four, which is listeners' picks. Ooh. So if you have a movie that you would want us to review, and right now a Christmas movie that you would want us to review... Just give us a shout out. Yeah, this is Stephanie. This is Mark. This is Brad. Good night. <laughs>